Miami, Florida. Home to some of the most beautiful buildings, the Miami Heat, the Miami Dolphins, and some of the best strip clubs that money can buy. Which, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why Coach Urban Meyer is coming to South Beach to coach the Miami Hurricanes. Shout out to the guys at College Football Revamped as we're doing an NCAA 14 College Football Revamped Dynasty Rebuild of the Miami Hurricanes. And as I mentioned before, Urban Meyer is now the head coach. He got fired down there as the Jacksonville Jaguars head coach due to the fact that he was caught in 4K in broad daylight, finger bumping a woman, having an affair on his wife. But let me tell you right now, if there is a football program in America that doesn't care about legal, marital, or sexual problems, it's the University of Miami. But in this alternate universe, the Canes are even more garbage than they are in real life right now. Thanks, Manny Diaz. This team is full of walk-ons. As mentioned previously, this is a complete rebuild for Urban Meyer and the Hurricanes. This is a death penalty dynasty, meaning we changed every single player's position to punter and then cut them from the team filling our squad with a bunch of fucking walk-ons. I mean, seriously though, I'm not joking. Look at this. Everyone is either basically a 50 overall or below. This is going to be absolutely miserable. There's no way that this first season is going to end out good. But um, as you guys will see by some of the other restrictions that we have on, this is definitely going to be a work in progress series. This is not going to be a national championship team in the first, second, or even third season of this dynasty, to be completely honest. It's going to take a lot of work. Let's go ahead and meet a little bit of the team, though. Starting quarterback for the Canes this year, who's going to be Anton Green, the 49 overall English major, who honestly didn't want to play football at all, but Urban Meyer came and said he'd fuck his mom if he didn't try out at least for the team. As you guys are going to see right here, he's pretty bad, though. 66 throw power, 57 throw accuracy. That's really bad. Right on his heels, though, is going to be back up in second string as of right now. David Watson, 6'5", 211 pounds with 70 speed. That is actually not a bad archetype at all. He's from Iowa. That's pretty cool. Agility is not bad either. Let's see what his throwing and throw power is. A 56 and a 60. Honestly, he might be a better player just because of how NCAA plays. Um, we're definitely going to have a QB battle this season, though, between Anton Green and David Watson. Third string is going to be Kevin Johnson. Our running back is going to be 47 overall, Jeff White. He's got 72 speed and only 78 acceleration. More of a power back, definitely. But to be 100% real with you, our backup running back, Dominique McBride, isn't very good either. Only 74 speed. He's definitely going to be more of our scat back, third downside back. But as you guys can see right here, ladies and gentlemen, Calvin Owens, the chemistry major, comes in at an 86 speed. That's good for the fastest on the team. But once again, though, he's a 44 overall. Let's go and see what the catching attributes are for all of our receivers. 64, 55, and 52 for Calvin Owens. So even though Calvin's the fastest player on our team, I don't even think it's going to fucking matter because I don't think he can catch the ball. Um, we're going to see, though. I do like to use the tight end in our offense a lot, actually. And Mike Mitchell is actually a six foot seven, 255-pound power forward. Coach Larinega actually let him come over to the football team, try out a little bit, man. He ended up making the team as a tight end. He's going to be our starter. And this is where it gets really, really bad for the Miami Hurricanes. The front five, our offensive line is terrible. You got Bryant Whitehead at a 42. You got Noah Phillips at a 47. You got Jared Woods at a 48. Oh my goodness, doesn't get any better on the right side. You got Kevin Wade at a 42. And then we're gonna have the right tackle, Zach Sanders at a 48. All of them are extremely slow. It's not going to be easy to run the ball. The pass blocking isn't going to be much better either, though. At left end, we got Richard Nixon. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's like a president's name or something. This is my first time, honestly, seeing this roster, so that's kind of a shock to me, too. But whatever, though. At right end, we got Riley Gore, kind of a homo name, coming into the 49 overall. And then we got uh, Freddie Nash and Lance Jones. Coming in at our two defensive tackles at a 44 to 43 overall. We are going to get zero sacks all season. Left outside linebacker is going to be the ginger ninja himself, Anthony Smith. And then the middle linebacker position is going to be Brandon Bailey. 65 speed, not terrible for a middle linebacker. He's probably going to be the player that we're using a lot. So expect him to lead the team in tackles. I'm looking here at right outside linebacker. And apparently we have no right outside linebackers. So uh, yeah, that's going to end up well. I guess no walk-on was ready to take on the burden of being a right outside linebacker at the University of Miami. But here are a look at our cornerbacks extremely slow players fast as an 84 speed but we got robert spurlock we got matt jackson thomas johnson at the nickelback and then we got jason nance at our dime yeah we're gonna get lit up through the air let's go ahead and see the safeties though we got daryl corn starting at free safety at a 50 overall one of the few 50 overalls on our team might only be the 
Second one behind our kicker. And then we got Clinton Lindsay at another 51 overall. Okay, so the safeties are definitely the strong suit of our team. He's got some dreads. Hard hitter from Mississippi. And then as I mentioned earlier, Mark Gibson is gonna be our kicker. Definitely gonna be the best player on our team. Expect him to hit some absolute bombs from about 20 yards out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and see here what his kicking power and stuff is going to be. 68 kick power, only a 52 kick accuracy. I just hope we can make some extra points. We're not getting in the end zone. What am I talking about? Oh, yeah. And how could I forget about Justin Macklin, the 6'1", 246 pound punter? This dude's a tank. Of course, this dynasty will be played on high some difficulty across the board with seven minute quarters. Player speed threshold at 10 because we want the fast players to feel really fast, which is probably going to be a huge disadvantage for us this year. The sliders aren't going to make it very easy either, as you can see right here. They're really bad for us. And for the CPU, we made them really good at 60s across the board. It's going to be a tough one, man, but it's all about the process, all about the rebuild. Now, because Urban Meyer and the Miami Hurricanes are coming off a death penalty, they're starting from ground zero. It wouldn't make sense for us to start out in the ACC, so we're going to be playing in the Sun Belt Conference. But here's a quick look at what our schedule is going to be looking like this year. It's not going to be very easy. We're going to be starting off with Florida Atlantic, probably more of the Florida team that is going to be near our level early on in this dynasty. We're going to see how far off we are from them. Then we got a bye week going into week two. Then here it is, the most important game of the season coming early in week three against the florida gators arguably the miami hurricanes biggest rival florida in the sec probably the big brother of the state of the last 20 years i'd say it's going to be interesting to see how far off we are against florida this is definitely going to be more of a measuring stick game then in week four we're going to be taking on the ohio bobcats followed by another bye week and then we get into conference play with troy and then coming up in week seven we have the annual rival of miami versus florida state that is definitely going to be a prime time game that we are going to get absolutely shit on in then we're going to be finishing out conference play with texas state south alabama followed by a bye week against Louisiana, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, Coastal Carolina, and then Arkansas State. And don't be fooled at all by the ranking now, by the way. That is just coming off of completely what they did last year, which has nothing to do with this year. We are going to be awful. Definitely going to drop out of the rankings probably after the first week. In terms of redshirting players, um... I don't really see necessarily a reason to redshirt any players. They're all going to be god awful. It's going to be all hands on deck to just try and score at all, to try and get any stops at all. So I don't think redshirting is going to be at all on Urban Meyer's mind. Now, because Urban Meyer is the head coach of this team, he does have a little bit of clout via social media scandal affairs um i don't know a couple national championships at the college level he is known for being a pretty good recruiter so this is the only thing that he is going to have that might be a benefit he is going to have maxed out scouting from the beginning but besides that for the rest of the season fellas we aren't going to put anything else in on recruiting. We're going to go all in on the game plan. So that's going to be three out of three on the road warrior, which means that our quarterback shine on the road. We have antifreeze, which means our kicker, the best player on our team is not going to get freezed at all. No ice in the kicker. It's not like it's going to be any close games anyways. And then we also have matchup which is the passing matchups up here in the pre-play coach cam. Honestly, I'm not even sure what that means, but that's going to be the only thing that we're going to be able to upgrade through the head coaching um, recruiting tree throughout the whole first season. So it's going to be tough. We at least deserve that. In terms of our defensive coordinator, we have Tavares Robinson, T-Rob, really good coach. Um, let's see, we have four upgrades available for him. Let's go ahead here and use one on each of these. I think that'll be good. And then we'll go up here and use one on shutdown. So that means road closed. They get plus one block shedding. Then we get plus one power moves and finesse moves with charge. It looks like we get plus two injury and 10% stamina increase with recharge. And then up here, we got shutdown, which is going to be plus one man coverage and plus two press for our corners and safeties. That's going to be absolutely critical considering our team is going to be terrible. And then our offensive coordinator is Rhett Lashley, who in real life just took the job at SMU. Respect, bruv. We're going to use that probably on, uh, I'd say up-tempo. We're going to use that definitely on up-tempo. We do not want our players getting tired at all, considering their stamina is already going to be really low. Then we're going to use it on ball security because all of our players carrying is probably going to be terrible. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the most important part of this rebuild is going to be the recruiting in this game, which I love recruiting in NCAA 14s. But guys, this is not going to be easy because we are coming off of a death penalty. 
which means that our football program was completely abolished during this first season. We are only going to be able to recruit two star prospects. So what we're actually going to be doing here, ladies and gentlemen, is this year we're only going to be able to recruit two stars and below. The next year it's going to be three stars. The year after that, it'll be four stars. And then the year after that, it will be five star players. So it's going to be four years before we're even able to recruit the top talent in the country. So it's going to be really hard for us to compete. But that's what happens whenever you're coming back from a death penalty. These five star prospects don't care about Urban Meyer and his booty hole finger and tendencies. One more thing, our pipeline states are California and Texas, because remember, we don't have any like normal football players on the roster. South Florida is a hotbed for high school talent. If you guys know anything about college football recruiting, that's why being at Miami is such a big thing. But because we're coming off a death penalty, none of the South Florida talent is here. We got California and Texas to work with, which isn't terrible, but it's going to be a work in progress. So like I said, it's going to be really hard to get players to want to come here to the University of Miami. 62 overall Juco center Derek Ingram doesn't look too bad. He is a Juco player, but once again, 62 overall would be our best offensive lineman by literally like 20 overall points. Two star 61 overall quarterback Joseph Love doesn't look like a bad player in a 4640. It's not bad for a quarterback. We actually do have quite a bit of players that have interest in the University of Miami and Although we are only allowed to recruit two-star players, we are going to try and lock down South Florida, the state of Miami. We're going to definitely be recruiting heavily within our own state. And this hurts so bad to look at. We are first on the number one center in the country. 6'5", 80 overall, Brad Hines. Oh my God, that would be an amazing get. And dude, we're number one on a four-star, number eight wide receiver, Howard Mills. Oh my goodness, right from our backyard, Niceville, Florida. Nice. All right, we got a recruiting board set up and we're gonna do some scouting. Now, I know I said that we don't have any specific position that we need to get, we just need everything. But you gotta have a good quarterback in college football. You just do. Look at all the best teams of all time, man. So we're definitely gonna be putting a lot of skill points and recruiting points into our quarterbacks. And Joseph Love doesn't look like a bad player. 76 throw power, so he's definitely got a stronger arm. And I also didn't see this too. Joseph Love actually has 78 speed. He's probably looking like the best all-around quarterback on this board. Tolvin. Interesting name right there with an 84 overall speed. And he's a 73 overall gym plus five on the overall. This is a guy that is gonna be He's going to be must get a 73 overall on a team where we have a bunch of 40 overalls. That's literally like freaking Barry Sanders. All right. We did our best that we could in terms of scouting. We're going to have to definitely scout some more in the regular season. Let's go ahead and start and advance to the regular season. Antonio Jackson, a 77 overall tackle. He is a Juco player, but we're going to be throwing a ton of points at him due to 77 overall offensive lineman would be absolutely huge coming into next season for us. We're going to put about 300 points for him and offer him a scholarship. And Dan Henry, the Juco receiver, was actually a gym with 91 speed. Definitely going to throw a ton of points at him. 91 speed. Speed can't be overestimated enough. I got a recruiting board set up for the most part. Obviously, this is going to be something that's going to be ongoing throughout the season. So I'm going to be giving a lot of in-depth updates as we get on throughout the season. I also wanted you guys to know that we do have the actual rosters here. So for example, Bryce Young is at Alabama. All the college players that you guys know are pretty much going to be in here. Obviously, they're going to graduate in some years or whatnot. Enough meandering around, though. Let's go ahead and get into the first game of the season against the FAU Owls. And oh my goodness. The bars are shaking so bad. 83 overall to 23 overall. 87 defense to 27 defense. What did I tell you guys? This is going to be an absolute shit show. We will be running a 4-3 defense on this team with a pro style offense. Who knows what's going to be able to click and work for us? We're going to find out. Oh boy, Davidson, a 90 overall running back. That's going to be absolute hell to deal with. And... Mark Gibson, look at him, 59 overall kicker, our best player, gotta love it. And this game, ladies and gentlemen, will be taking place at FIU. Look at those numbers, man. Oh, goodness, boys and girls, sizing them up. Yeah, we're gonna get shit on. Let's go ahead here and see if we're at least gonna be able to win the coin toss, Tails Never Fails. Hey, we won that, it's probably gonna be the only thing we win today. Here we go though, ladies and gentlemen, kicking the ball off for the first time this season is Mark Gibson, and this season and dynasty is underway as the Miami Hurricanes are taking on the Florida Atlantic Owls. Let's go here, let's see if Mark Gibson can get a tackle. Oh my goodness, he just got murdered. Please tackle him, please tackle him, oh my goodness. Now defensively, I am gonna be doing the ask coach thing to make it kind of like it's a defensive coordinator type situation. We're going to be coming out here with Brandon Bailey, our middle linebacker, stud middle linebacker walk-on. Came to the school not knowing he was going to play football, and we could absolutely pancake their first play. Oh my goodness, please tackle him. Stiff-armed right to the face. 
Okay, Malcolm Davidson, I see how it's going to be. Let's go over here with Clinton Lindsay display. Putting a man in motion right there. That's going to be a wide receiver reverse. Can we tackle him? Hey, got him brought down only a two-yard gain. Not bad. Well, Jontae Wester on the carry. The biggest thing with this team is going to be tackling. I think that is where we're really going to struggle at the most. Um, block shedding is going to be rough, too. I think teams are just going to be able to absolutely shove it down our throat. No homo all season long. Hopefully we can get a stop right here, though. They're going to be passing. Okay, he's rolling out. He's rolling out. Oh, that's going to be wide open. Our safety, actually. It looks like that might be our middle linebacker um, was beating coverage right there. Oh, not good. Coming down a little bit of cover three this time. We're just going to try and see in this first game what works for us, what doesn't. Got a route going over the middle. Can we get our first sack of the season? No, we can't. And a, what a hit right there by Brandon Bailey. Absolutely laying the quarterback out. Gotta love this. Let's look at this replay right here. Goes in. Oh my goodness, what a hit. Send a little bit of heat right here with the safety blitz. Looks like it's going to be Clinton coming up there. See if he's going to be able to pick it up right here. Drag right across the middle of the field. Bring him down. It's going to be a first down though. Big third down right here. We are going to run commit and absolutely send the house. Oh God, it's a pass. Oh, great. Oh, come on. Bring him down. Bring him down. Oh, my goodness. We got a sack. Who was that? Who's number 96? Let me see who that is. Riley Gore getting the first sack of the season. I didn't think we were going to get a sack all year. We actually hold him to a fourth down. Let's see what they're going to do. Looks like they're going to kick a field goal. Absolutely. We love it. Held him to a field goal the first drive. Honestly, way better turnout than I anticipated. That's going to be up, and that is going to be good. Though The score is going to be 3-0, but honestly, that's a win. Quick little studio update right here is Boston College narrowly escapes Georgia Southern. Some of the some of the upsets that happened in this game, like look at that. Central Michigan beats NC State right there. UCLA, number 13 in the country, beats Virginia. It's cool seeing what's going on across the country. Here we go, though, fellas. Coming out for the first time this season, Anton Green leads the Miami Hurricane offense out. Urban Meyer not calling the plays. That's going to be Red Lashley, but he's dropping back right there, and he's a left-handed quarterback. That is good to know. I had no clue that Anton Green was a lefty. That's going to be really interesting. Second and medium, we're going to hand the ball up the middle here to Jeff White, and just absolutely no run back blocking right there and very very quickly we're in a third and long situation right here with Anton Green let's see if we can pick this up oh god I don't see anyone open we're gonna check down be able to pick it up oh my goodness dang it I didn't see anybody open right there we're probably gonna have to punt this one away 40 overall punter John Fox coming out here to try and flip fields let's see if we're gonna be able to do this okay great punt oh my lord what the hell was that? Okay, so this was about a 13-yard punt. I'm not quite sure that that is even going to be worth punting ever. In this gap, we're in man coverage. Willie Taggart's just going to take off and run. Gets the first down, pretty much. Three plays into this series and already backed up extremely deep into our own territory. Three down linemen. I don't like the look of this. I want to audible out and send a blitz. Yep, okay, saw that coming. We're just getting pancaked all over. Breaks the tackle, breaks another tackle, and he is going to carry the whole Miami Hurricanes defense into the end zone right there. What a run by Malcolm Davidson. Oh, my goodness. Looking like the real-life Miami Hurricanes, man. We are going to be the worst tackling team in the country. It's 10 to 0, guys. Second drive back out on offense right now. Anton Green leading the team out. We're going to give a stretch right to, Ze to Jeff White right here. Pardon me. And just no blocking. Nowhere to go. He's breaking a couple tackles. Oh, my goodness. I think Jeff White has two carries for negative four yards right now. Third and 13 already. Basically deep in our own territory still. Is anyone open? Anyone open? We're going to pass the ball over there to Clyde. What's his name? Calvin Owens. That's his name. Our fastest player. Fourth and three right now. I'm really tempted to go for this after seeing how our last punt went. I'm really tempted. I'm not giving, I'm not punching here and giving them the ball at the, the could be the 30 yard line. We're going to go out here. We're going to go in here and see what they're going to come out in right now. Oh my goodness. This, I know this is terrible. This is a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. This isn't going to end well. This is not going to end well. Oh my God. Oh, he's open. He's open on the hitch. Thank goodness. Gonzalez, run the ball. Don't fumble. Thank you, John Gonzalez. Eight yard reception. We moved the chains, baby. Let's go. And something interesting we're going to have to remember is this is a left handed quarterback. I'm used to like rolling out to the right. That's not going to work, though. Oh, he might be open right there. Go, go, Mitchell. Our tight end. 
the football player, I mean the basketball player turned football player, six foot seven, Mike Mitchell, skipped practice the other day because he had a basketball game, but it's okay. That's going to be a conflict that we're going to have to deal with early in the season, but he picks up a huge gain right there. Put a little bit of play action right here, try and throw him off. It's going to be man coverage. Oh my goodness, and Anton Green gets absolutely raped by a bunch of black sacks, and this sets us back quite a ways right now. Let's see if we can hit our running back on this Texas route. We're going to run out. Set our feet. We're going to throw it right there. Oh, I thought we were going to be able to get it to Mitchell again. Maybe McGee's going to be able to get open on this post route. I don't know. Maybe that Texas route or something. Oh, my goodness. We have our tight end kind of open over the middle. That's going to be overthrown, though. Fourth and 17. There's no way we can go for this one. This is. We might as well just get the 12 yards of fucking field position. Oh, my goodness, dude. Honestly, watch. This is what we're going to try and do. This is what we're going to try and do. John Fox, we're going to utilize you to the best of your ability. We're going to go over here to the wide part of the field. We're going to kick it like this. Oh, my... That did not work at all how I thought it was going to. And we get about a 12-yard punt. Trying to get something going here. It's going to be a toss right. Oh, it's a fake play. It's a fake play. Is he going to throw it? He's going to throw it. Oh, who almost intercepted right there by Matt Jackson. Sticking his man. Great in coverage. FAU trying to beat us with a trick play, dude. Third and one. I think they're going to run the ball here. We're going to sell out on the run. They do run the ball, but it doesn't matter. Oh, my goodness. Davidson breaks the tackle, and he's going to be gone to the end zone. Florida Atlantic gets another touchdown. Already 111 rushing yards. Three plays, 48 yards, and the tackling, once again, just seems to be a huge problem for this Miami Hurricanes defense, man. Go. Run. Oh, my goodness. Look at this putt. Look at this kicker turn. All the way down to the 35-yard line. Zach Simmons, look at him go. I like this route going over the middle right here. Let's see if we can throw that, though. Nice catch. He catches it. Let's go. Zach McGee with his second big catch of the game. And look at Sebastian throwing some punches. We're not out of this one. Call me crazy, but I like this play right here. Play action screen. Throw the ball. Okay, that was going to be open if we could have threw the ball. Anton Green sack for what the second or third time this game. We've learned one thing though. Anything play action, throw it out of the playbook completely. I do not want that ran on my field. Nice little comeback right there though. Great pickup, John Gonzalez, third and four coming up. A little bit of four down territory right here, no man's land. So I think we're actually going to give a halfback draw right here. We're probably going to go for it anyways. Nice, good blocking, good blocking. Hold the blocks. Oh, so close right there. It's going to bring up a very manageable fourth and two though. And a little bit of strategy shown right there by Coach Meyer, knowing this is four down territory. Looks like they're coming out in a goal line type set. Jeff White might be open right here. Nope. But he is Mike Mitchell with another catch right there. And he is going to be our safety outlet. Mike Mitchell, no. And I think Mike Mitchell's hurt. Yep, Mike Mitchell out with a broken toe, but he will return soon. Mike Mitchell is the toughest son of a gun on this team. Some slants going right here. Let's see if anyone's going to be able to get open. We don't have very much time, but that's going to be open right there. Run, baby, run. Let's go, Zach McGee. On the slant route right there, picking up some yardage. I think we're inside the red zone, actually. We do want to try and manage a little bit of clock. We don't want Florida Atlantic to get the ball back and be able to score before halftime. I know beggars can't be choosers, but I'd like to be able to at least... Try and get a field goal here. Oh my goodness, that's going to be open on the out route right there. Beautiful catch. Let's go, Matthew Robinson. We're in the five-yard the five yard line. We do not want to give FAU the ball back. I can't stress that enough. And look at the beautiful babies. And I might be absolutely nuts for this, but I love this toss play right here. I love it. I love it. I was crazy. I knew it. Remember, though, guys, we do get ball to begin the second half, so we have a chance to double dip the chip right here. Score right now, then score after halftime. I know that is a far-fetched dream but you never know we're gonna throw this one to the end zone oh a little bit of miscommunication right there between anton green and the receiver man if we could somehow figure out how to get in the end zone right here dude he completely changed the trajectory of this season <laughs> what am i talking about come on we're gonna throw that one to him oh that's gonna be batted down again fourth and goal i think we gotta go for this man i really think we gotta go for this from the seven yard line we can go for this. We can go for this. We can go for this, man. Oh, my goodness. Zach McGee out for the game with a freaking dislocated shoulder. Dude, we're not going to have a team by the end of this game. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Come on. Run. Oh, God. No one's open. We're just going to have to throw it. Ugh. We should have kicked a field goal. And thank goodness it looks like they're actually going to have this one go into halftime where the score is going to be 17-0. to I'm not mad at it. We saw some bright spots on offense, offensively, on defense. Really, really bad. The tackling just not there. I, we got a second half to play. Here we go. Starting off the second half. Going to be starting off with just a little bit of a run right here. 
to Jeff White once again, see if we can get some blocking. We absolutely cannot be faster, be faster. Oh man, we were so close to getting that corner. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of liked what I've seen out of Anton Green, man. I love the le I love the left-handed factor he has. Being a lefty quarterback gives you such an advantage, man. It's just so awkward. No one's open. We're going to check down here to Jeff White. Pick up some yards there, buddy. Third and six. That's manageable. And we're going to have to try and somehow take advantage of the coverages that they're in because we don't have the best players in the world. We're not just going to be able to throw the ball at will willy-nilly down the field. So we're just going to try and take a deep shot here. Verticals. Oh, my goodness. What was our tight end Fox doing right there? Anton Green, as I'm singing his praises, throws his first interception of the season right there. Oh my gosh, man. That's just a mistake that we can't make. Oh my goodness. It's a play action. It's a screen. Tackle him, tackle him, tackle him. Oh no. Get him, get him, get him. Okay, push him out of bounds. Thank goodness. Malcolm Davidson is murdering us. Already first and goal after one play on offense due to the turnover. Gotta start and get a stop right here. No one's open. He's just going to take off. Can we tackle him? That was user error. I'll admit, I am willing to bet my left testicle that this is going to be a run up the middle. So we are run committing. We're run Oh my goodness. My left testicle might be gone. That was kind of a run up the right. Not necessarily the middle. Um, it's going to be 24 to 0 though. I think men can function correctly without a, one testicle. I think without two testicles might be a bit of a problem, but I think I can live without one. Anton Green leading the team out again, trying to redeem himself after that last interception. Let's see if we can get a run up the middle right here. No, we cannot. Cannot afford another pick. Throwing the comeback. That's going to be open right there. Good catch. Great catch by Calvin Owens, man. He's going to be a weapon this season. The funniest part about all this, though, is that none of these players are even really going to be on the team or get a bunch of playing time next year because we're going to be bringing in a lot of recruits to walk on. Oh, my <laughs> Oh my goodness, I gotta see that again. Did you guys see that pancake? Who is this? And our right guard was absolutely blown up right there. That was gore. Holy shit, dude. Would you like some syrup with that pancake? Third and one right now. I don't like the look at this at all. I didn't like the look at that run play. We're gonna audible out. He's open. He's open. Go, Gonzalez. Run, baby. Let's go. What is that? John Gonzalez for an 18-yard reception. Anton Green did not like the look at all of how that run blocking was going to be set up. So we audibled great IQ right there. Led to an 18-yard reception. And after Anton Green threw an interception on that last drive, he's come out and definitely bounced back, showing some maturity. The English major. Gonna throw the ball right there to Jeff White again on the Texas route. He's going to get absolutely obliterated, but another nice gain. Third and four. Got to pick this up. Little hitch route that's going to be open right there. Run, baby, let's go. And that's going to be Calvin Owens again. Great reception. Time running down here in the third quarter. We're going to go a little bit of four verticals action. Oh, God. Oh, no. Throw it away. Throw it away. Thank goodness he got that ball away or that was going to be a huge sack. Once again, I'm not quite used to having to roll out left. I'm so used to rolling out right. We're going to get used to that, though. I think it could really be an advantage if we're able to figure it out. Doesn't look like anyone's going to be up. We're just going to check down right there. No good. We're going to have to settle for a field goal, ladies and gentlemen. At a 47-yard field goal. That's going to be up, and that is going to be no good. Oh, my goodness. Honestly, not even close. Oh, my goodness. Are we going to go scoreless? Florida State loses to Oklahoma State. That's a good sign. We're always happy about that. Here we are in the final quarter of play, though. The fourth quarter, and FAU once again driving down the field. Let's see if we can get a stop. Receiver in motion. They're going to run the ball. That is going to be Davidson once again. And he is just shrugging Miami defenders off like it's nothing. Malcolm Davidson, another 10 plus yard carry. And our safety play needs help. They try and get us off sides right there. They might have got it. Willie Tiger Jr. though. He's going to take off. We're able to tackle him. No, we're not as we get blocked. And he's able to run into the end zone. Willie Tiger Jr. The son of the former Florida State coach runs into the end zone right there, making it 31 to zero. And it is officially embarrassing in Boca, Florida right now as it's 31-0. I like Calvin Owens on an out route here. See what he's got. Nice, perfectly timed ball. Calvin Owens, our fastest player, off to the races to the 30-yard line. Calvin Owens with a 34-yard reception right there. He's been the bright spot on this offense today. Him and Anton Green are going to have a beautiful connection throughout this season. Honestly, I'm extremely happy with that play. Really loving what I've seen out of Calvin Owens today. Urban Myers definitely going to have to figure out ways to get him initiated more in the offense right there. That was a terrible throw. Gonzalez catches the ball, though. We can't get a block from our fullback. John Gonzalez, five-yard reception. And the biggest thing in this one is we just do not want to be held scoreless please someone get open tight end mitchell drops the ball 
Oh my goodness, that's devastating. Absolutely devastating. Running the ball up the middle once again. Oh my goodness, no. Not again, dude. Oh no, we can't tackle him. Oh no, is this going to be a touchdown? Oh my goodness, thank God. Malcolm Davidson shoestring tackle right there by Russell. Holy crap, good hustle, man. But I mean, gosh, our we never make the first tackle, ever. Only about two minutes to go here in the fourth. Can we please just try and keep them out of the end zone? Please. Tackle him, tackle him. Nice. Oh my, what? No. Oh my goodness, he fumbled. Holy, what is going on? What kind of play is this? Bring out the turnover chain, baby. Let's go. What the hell kind of play was that? He got tackled, but was still up. I literally quit commentating because I thought it was over. Gets back up, starts running, fumbles. What the hell happened? I don't know, but we got the ball back somehow, dude. Oh, booth fucking review. What do you fucking know? Can't even let us have this. We're going to be 31 to 0 right now. Are we really booth reviewing this? Oh, he was definitely down. 100% down. Good call. And after his knee, and after the running back's knee was clearly down, play is reversed. Just knee the ball. We're not going to call a timeout. It's just knee the fucking ball. There's no need to run like this. There's no need. There's, okay, this is just adding insult to injury at this point. Remember this game in this series. The next time we play for Atlantic, maybe not the next time, but eventually we're going to beat the fucking dog shit out of these kids, bro. And as we wind down to the end of this one, ladies and gentlemen, we end up losing 38 to zero. No reason for FAU to score that last touchdown. In the future of this series, we will be using that for ammo the next time we play Florida Atlantic. We're coming for blood. I promise you that. Still sucks though to walk out of here with a fat ass L. I knew it would have Malcolm Davidson completely toward us. 174 yards, four touchdowns on the ground. What a day by him. We can't fucking tackle. Taking a quick look at some stats. So Anton Green, the left, he honestly didn't have that bad of a game. 20 for 33, 216 yards, only one interception, no touchdowns though. Jeff White, a horrendous game rushing the ball. 14 attempts for negative four yards. You're bald, buddy. And I would really like to highlight Calvin Owens. Four receptions for 63 yards. Absolute monster for us, man. He's going to be a big part of his offense this year. 34-yard reception. Defensively, Daryl Crone in the full safety led us in tackling with six. I thought that Brandon and Bailey honestly was gonna get more since I was using him but he only had one tackle shows how fucking much I am and how good I am nada Miami is left with questions about their offense after their shutout loss to say the fucking least pal that is gonna bring us to the end of this episode ladies and gentlemen 38 point loss it's very bitter to swallow but hey next week it's a new week we got a bye week and then we're gonna be taking on the Florida Gators in the next episode one of our most bitter rivals I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did be sure to hit that subscribe button hit the like button leave a comment down below on what other types of videos you guys want to see go chase your dreams today I hope you guys do enjoy this series I'm gonna be putting a lot more older type video game um, videos out. I got some 2K11 videos coming out. I got some NCAA 11 videos coming out. Got some really cool ideas coming up. I'm really excited for the future on this channel. So hit the subscribe button. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support on the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I'm the coming attraction.